happy Sunday, if you even know it's Sunday. So I know we're still going through week six, I think, of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, epidemic, whatever you want to call it. And folks are trapped in their homes. Uh, they're doing what they called social distancing. I think they're call it, calling it now personal distancing or something, individual distancing. But the, um, the whole uh, pandemic thing for people that get out and go to bars and do all that stuff is very, very difficult. Um, for people like me who don't really go to bars and stuff, um, I do miss going to coffee shops to have a coffee and a chat with a friend. Um, I do miss going to some stores that I go to. I don't go to a lot of stores, so I find I can get most stuff online, so I enjoy that. Um, and it's starting to become summertime now, so I think uh, kayaking is going to be impossible if this continues, um, and other things that I do. So, so my wife and I haven't killed each other yet. We're still getting along ex exceptionally well after many, many years together. So, and our kids are, and their our kids and their kids are doing very well uh, under these conditions, and everybody's staying healthy. So. So anyway, I hope you folks out there in the land of YouTube and maybe specifically watch watchmaking, watch repair, are also staying healthy. So because it's uh, these are dangerous times. So I'm also working from home, so I don't do this for a living. So as I've told you before, um, I have another job, um, and I do work in an office. So we're having to use um, we're having to use iPhones a lot, like that. And using iPhones means that uh, you're setting this up with uh, either FaceTime or Google Duo or Google Meet or one of those things, and you're spending most of your meetings, I find, are online, which is very tiring, I think, because you don't see people, you don't, you're, you're focusing on the phone, and you're not getting to move your eyes around and see other things, so it becomes uh, pretty exhausting. So by the time you hit the end of the day, uh, I th that a lot of people are finding themselves very, very tired. So, so anyway, that's uh, I can hear my wife singing outside the door or something. So hopefully the YouTube copyright people don't attack me because they can hear the song or something. So anyway, so uh, I got a bunch of watches out here, and the reason why is that uh, you know I've been timing these watches, um, and this is a Hamilton. Uh, what is it, a 17 Jewel Lancaster? So it's a nice piece. Uh, it's got a uh, it's got a nice um, regulator on it. It's running it's running fairly well. Uh, it's got no no real issues anymore. I had repaired this watch, this Lancaster. Um, let's see if I can zoom in and go down. Eh? So there we go. So yeah, I had repaired this, uh, and it was in pretty bad condition. I believe I made the balance staff for this. Sometimes I lose track. And every day I check the time and I use a program called Time Is. It's time time dot is is what the uh, the uh, website is and it gives you a specific atomic clock time. Um, you know it's 100 percent accurate. And I use that and then I just tweak tweak this watch um, just a bit. And with this regulator you put a screwdriver right in here like that and you just turn it ever so slightly um, maybe a quarter turn and then I uh, like I, I put the do the quarter turn on it right and I put the back 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 on it's a lot of backs put the back back on and then this is a lever set so there's a lever in there and I'll pull the lever out of this thing and then reset it so right now it's 13 19 27 and this watch is showing around 13, 19, 27, which is pretty impressive. So, so it's a it's a very nice Hamil Hamilton 17 jewel. It's not worth a lot of money, but uh, it's a nice watch. It's a beautiful pocket watch, mint condition, very nice. So, very very nice, very very nice. This one here is also a, uh, a Hamilton, and this one here I, is the one I think I the case is a bit tattered as they say um, I'd like to get a, a, a really nice uh, Wade, Wadesworth um, case for this and just recase it because I'd, I'd love to have this movement in a Wadesworth case so if, 
If you have any suggestions of where I might pick up a Wadesworth case for a decent price, I'll take it, right? But this one here, this watch here is, I think I've shown this to you before, but it's also keeping exceptional time now that I've spent probably two weeks every morning, come downstairs, check the time, slightly adjust it. Um, and I'm only, adjust, I'm only doing it to one position, right? So it shouldn't count, right? So this one here, the crown is kind of loose, loosey-goosey. So I think I'd like to replace the crown on this, but for now I'm just leaving it the way it is. And to open this, you got to pull the crown out like like that. And then I found you got to put the your your opener, your watchmaking case back opener under the lip here, and don't put a lot of pressure this way because I did do that once and it slid a bit, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna crack off the second hand on this, which would really piss me off. So. I didn't, and so this is a, I think it's a 992B movement. Um, this is a gorgeous movement. Uh, I, I worked on this. This is the one where I made the uh, the fourth wheel pivot on it, so, and that's a 992 movement. I, and I just got to show this to you up close again because it's so good, right? And I, and I also have to, you know, I'm going to refocus this too as I move it up close. So it's... Um, so it's completely focused here for you to see because this is just a gorgeous movement, right? It re it requires people to be seeing it. There it is there. So that is a 21 joule 992 gorgeous movement. And I got this thing running extremely well. And it was the fourth wheel. I'm going to try to point at it somehow. So one, two, three, four. So it's this wheel here, which is the wheel for the second hand. So the bottom part of that, the pivot was broken, and I replaced the, uh, I made the new pivot on the lathe, and I capped the old one. So I capped the shaft, basically, with a shaft slash pivot arrangement, and it worked exceptionally well. So this watch is, again, working really well, and um, it's uh, it's just gorgeous. So I'd like to actually recase this. So it's, it's in this case. It's... A good enough case, a bit worn out. It's the original case for the watch, I'm sure. Um, but it's, uh, I'd love to recase it and then have, have this as a, as my, as my new, 992, movement in a, Wadesworth case with the bar on it. You know the ones with the, with the uh, the bow and then the bar on it. So, love to do that. Um, so I'm looking for for a, a different case for this actually so even though this is kind of neat a flip out case and this is a what's the brand of this case i'm not sure what it is i should put my watch making glasses on anyway i can't tell the brand of this case so so that's this watch and again when i close this watch make sure that the stem is out like this and it's fitted and then i push my fingernail on the very edge here right on the edge of this and push it down so until it's flat like that and then I don't I don't put any pressure on on this at all and then I can push the crown back down into position like that so it's in the position I think I wound this this morning yeah, I did and then very carefully put the uh, the glass the crystal on this also is a I, I got this new compound I might try on this because it uh, there's this claim that it works <laughs> It's a rubbing compound. I'm going to show it to you in a second here. So I'm just chatting away today. It's chatty chat way today, today time. <clears throat> I got my golf voice on. So speaking of golf, um, I do play a few video games. So I got to admit because I'm basically a nerd from way back. And <clears throat> one of the games I'm playing is called uh, the Golf Club, and and it's uh, it's it's a downloadable game part of Steam. If you've if you've uh, ever played on Steam before, so it's uh, it's called the Golf Club. Anyway, I think it was made. Somebody told me. I think my buddy told me it was made in Nova Scotia, right, Canada, which I'm impressed with. Um, of course, we did invent like propeller stuff and everything else, right? So up in Canada, so that's because it's really cold up here and <clears throat> really long days. So you got to spend your time inventing stuff. So anyway, the um, this golf game is really cool. It, uh, it works really well. It's very realistic. So in lieu of actually playing golf, which I love to do, 
Um, I can't golf right now, so uh, it's it's not a bad alternative. I go online with my buddy. We put our headsets on, and we're able to talk with each other online and play a little game of golf and then put the heat on each other as, as needed, right? So let me put this away before I cut myself. So this watch here was the... the I'll say Elgin, okay, because I've got a lot of comments in my videos where they're saying, it's Elgin, it's not Elgin. Well, again, I hate to do this Canada thing, but because basically Americans and Canadians are like the same people. They just decided, one just one group decided to go north, or stay north, and the other group decided to go uh, south. And maybe the south guys get a better deal because they can golf longer every year so. Somebody also said, do you have a Newfoundland accent? I said, I don't think so. I think I have a CBC News accent or, or maybe NBC News accent. This is NBC. Or see, that's a good NBC News accent. So this is an Elgin. Uh, so we call it in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where I lived for quite a while. It's called Elgin. There's Elgin up in Ottawa. There's Elgin Street Theater. And it's not called Elgin. It's called Elgin Street Theater. There's Elgin Street. And in Halifax, there's also Elgin Diner, the Elgin Diner, and there's all sorts of other things. Oh, that's Ottawa with the Elgin Diner. So anyway, this is an Elgin, but people are saying it's pronounced Elgin for the watch company. So I'll call it Elgin just to make, so I don't get any comments. So this is an Elgin. So this one here, um, the other one I just showed you is railroad grade. So this one here is also railroad grade. So this, I paid... Didn't pay a lot for it, I don't think, for this one. Like 120 bucks, maybe. Um, maybe 100 bucks. But it took a lot of work to get it going properly. Um, but man, is it ever going properly now? Anyway, this is it. This is the watch here and the movement. It's supremely decorated. If I was really uh, anal retentive about this, I'd strip it down. And this is where the gold settings are for the jewels, right? For the various wheels. So. And when you count wheels on a watch, in case you didn't know, you probably know, the first wheel is the mainspring, so that's one. The center wheel is two, right? And the, the third wheel is just an intermediate wheel between between the, um, the I guess, the center and the, and the uh, fourth wheel. So it's one, two, third wheel, which is an intermediate wheel. It doesn't drive a, a, any... Um, watch hands or anything it's an intermediate wheel and then there's and it has to do with all the gearing in the watch and then there's um four and the four fourth wheel is the one with the pivot that sticks through and then this is the fifth wheel and that's the the escapement and yeah, the one with the little little paws on it little uh, feet on it and then there's no sixth wheel i don't believe but there's the next is the pallet fork and the pallet fork going back and forth and pushing the balance here and so I regulated this watch a while back. This is railroad grade watch. Uh, it's a BW Raymond uh, pocket watch. It's mint condition again. Really nice movement. Really nicely decorated. And I cleaned and fixed this one. I did make the uh, I did make the balance for this. I think, and I made a video because I make tons of videos, right? <clears throat> Probably too many, but some people are enjoying them. Anyway, I made a video for it, and uh, this I made the balance, and then I spent the last three weeks maybe just every morning fine-tuning it now I've got some software called e-timer and you can tell right away whether it's uh, regulated or not and you can get it pretty close but I love doing the setting the time is and then the next day having a look at how close I really am and then just ever so slightly rolling this one here you get to roll this little wheel here left or right because it rides on a threaded bar so this this bar this bar right here is threaded and this wheel is threaded, so when you, when you just like a screw or nut rather, when you when I push it in this direction, it right goes this way, and I push it in this direction, it goes the other way. So when it goes this way, the the regulator arms um, get tighter uh, or get or go more towards the stud. I think that's the way it works. Uh, yeah, this this way actually more towards the stud. This way is further away so it's faster and slower so this way is slower and the other way is faster I gotta look at this and see I gotta switch glasses I just have these glasses on which is which are no good for watch discussions and watch repair they're crappy glasses oh remind me to show you this uh, stuff I bought for cleaning crystals 
I'll try it out here online while I'm here too. So let me look at this closely. Um, yeah, slow is on this side. So it goes this way, it goes slower. And it goes this way, it goes faster. Because if it's going this way, it's it's shortening the, the hairspring, the relative length of the hairspring by riding the regulator pins along the hairspring like this. The two pins that look like uh, snake teeth and just sort of riding along there. So, And the tolerance in these, and this is really tight. So when I made this balance staff and tuned it, it's like, it wasn't easy. You make them just a bit bigger than you need them, and then you're, uh, and then you can sort of fart with it a bit. But if you make them, if you make the pivots too short, you, there's no fine tuning. Uh, you end up, you end up not being able to do it properly. So speaking of pivots too short, the next watch that I did, so this one here, I also made the balance staff for it twice. So, and I think I might make a third one because I. I didn't, I'm not satisfied with it yet. So it's running too slow. The amplitude is too crappy for me to be able to regulate the time. As you can see, the time is one o'clock. All the other ones are one, 131 is the actual time right now. So over a couple days, it's a half an hour slow. And if you look at this, <clears throat> this is one I've failed at, I think. So if you want to count your failures, I love this, this the heftiness of this movement though. It's kind of cool. It's a silveroid. So that's it there. It runs, right? And that's the bound I made the balance staff. And if I look at like the tolerances were crazy on this thing. If I looked at it sideways to get that balance staff absolutely correct. So but I can't it's got the amplitude's probably 90 or something. It's not that good, right? And it runs I think it runs the other way better. I'm not sure. Right. One thing I didn't do here, which is I should have, I, I did a lot of work on the upper jewel and got that sitting nice and everything. The lower jewel that's on the inside of everything, I never really worked on that lower jewel. And I should have, because that lower jewel is actually, it's contained within the movement. So in this movement is a pretty high grade uh, movement as well. It has a dust cover on it. Um, it is adjusted. It is, uh, I think it's 15 joules. It's very old. It's from the 1880s, um, and it's got a dust cover on the outside. And I made a, I made a video about making the balance staff. So I made the balance staff, and it works, um, which is one like, it's good, right? It's good that it works. I was, I thought I had to shim it, but in, at the end, I didn't have to shim anything on this thing. It worked perfectly the way I had it. I did have to put it on a uh, in a lathe to. I tried to, using a J-cut tool to trim the balance staff down, and and it was just too much work. So I ended up popping the uh, the roller table off of it again, and then putting it back in my lathe, and then doing some work on the uh, on the on the pivot with the uh, J-cut tool. Just while I'm talking about pivots and J-cuts and stuff, just hang on a second. I gotta reach down and grab something here. So what I do when I, I was doing this before, let me just grab these two things here just to talk about it for a second. So chatting away here. This is one of those chatting, chatty Kathy days today. So I've got these, when I get down to making the pivot and then I'm finalizing the pivot, um, I think I need a piece of paper again to show you some stuff here. So this is like lessons from one of my thousands of books that I have. And I'm going to move this watch this way a bit here. Just a little bit out of sight, and I'll talk about these watches in a second. But So when I'm making a, um, a balance staff, and I'm finished the staff, right? And <clears throat> I'll just try to orient this. Orientate. So orient and orientate are both good, by the way. Had an argument with a guy once about this so so if this is the balance here so i've got the the pivot like this right and then let's say i've got it goes up like that and then and it goes up like this and then like that i'm trying to right and then and then right here is the roller table and i'll make a simple roller table with a jewel there's the jewel for the roller table and then I have 
very close to that I end up with the balance right and I'll just put the balance up like this and like this I'm gonna make sure I go the right number of jobby do's here right I think it's there hard to say there's the balance there and then there's a I'll put a little screw here there's there's timing screws and there's screws used because the material of the balance uh, it's usually two types of material will shrink and they'll, they'll extend or enlarge and, and shrink depending on cold or hot weather so there's other screws in there too and someday we talk, we'll talk about that so there's this and then here just as this balance dips down a bit and the staff dips down you end up with the hairspring collet here and then you end up with a I'll just draw the hairspring like that the hairspring then the balance comes out again and then right here it cones down and then up and then down and then there's the pivot so down up down pivot and that's the area to catch the oil right there so if I enlarge that right this is my big enlargement diagram here so that's enlarging it like that I end up with this like this and then I did not want to screw this up here of course I should have used the lines right what an idiot anyway end up with this like this and then going down like that and then it goes up and then it cones like that I don't know if that worked or not but so down up like that and then cones or there's a bit of a cone or whatever the heck that's called see I'm an electrical engineer if I was a mechanical engineer I'd have the proper term for this right but I'm not I'm an electrical engineer so what I should do is put a, a resistor here like that and then a capacitor like this and a ground there we go that makes more sense so this part right here this cone the part that sort of comes down it's conic in nature right so it looks it it looks like if you were to draw it like a hat it would be like that and then like this right that's the cone then it come down like this and come down like that and then inward a bit and then outward and then like that so an inward outward and then like this so that's that's kind of what it would look like right I'm gonna move this completely out of the way get a little closer so this area here is the area that when you make a make a, a balance staff it's pretty easy to make a balance staff to this point right when you're finishing off the pivot the pivot will end up being something like 0 0.2 0 0.25 millimeters maybe in uh, in width um, and this isn't an improper diagram because three quarters of the cone you end up with or two-thirds rather of the cone is this distance here two-thirds is from here to here like that so that's two-thirds and then one-third is from here to here so if I look at this diagram here the two-thirds is from here to here like that I'm crossing diagrams here so that's two-thirds like that and then one-third is from here to here so go inside this is one third and the reason for that being like this is engineering it's structural right because it's the strength the strength of this I'm not sure whether if I drew if I made this straight and then tried to make a pivot off of it I'd end up with an angle so if I if I made this straight like that and I got to this point and then I tried to make a sharp pivot I would end up with an angle so I'd end up straight then pivot and then straight and then pivot and this little angle here where the pivot is um, would be where the pivot would fail right at this point right there where that angle is so so you make so that's why this is uh, sort of conic in nature right someone can write me a note and correct me about what this is I'll, or I'll go downstairs get my old geometry book and then and it's an arc right where the arc here and it's I don't know 2 pi over whatever so so anyway and there's a tangent 
So if I did a tangent on this, so that that would be weak if this that's why these things are conic. So so when you're cutting a pivot and you get to the point where you've got everything fitted properly, so you've fitted the first thing you're you you know you're 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 in the lathe with this and it's a piece of metal, right? And you're cutting you're cutting the um, I don't know why I got into freaking watch making lathe stuff today, but anyway. There's my piece of metal right there. So I got a big ass, big ass, I said big ass. <laughs> I got a big piece of metal. <laughs> I guess I can say big ass on YouTube. There's my collet that's grabbing it. I'll just go like this with the collet. There's my collet and it's grabbing this piece here, right, inside. And it goes all the way in like that. And it goes probably, I'd say if this is, if this thing here is a, uh, 100% then probably 20% is inside the collet to give it uh, enough um, strength when you're cutting and then and you're cutting the first thing you've got to do or first thing you're cutting is you're cutting the the seat for the uh, for the for the balance right so get my other pen here I gotta get a red one hang fire hang fire hang fire is in the military if you have a gun and you shoot it and and the bullet doesn't go off it's called a hang fire so so here's what you do you're cutting this first like that and you're cutting it all the way to the end like this I'm not sure if I'm gonna get dimensions right so that's the first cut and then you're taking the balance and as you're you're cutting this you're ending up with a three degree slope here so this part here if I look at this part here and I go like that and I draw it big like that and this side here like this and draw it like that and then I'm going in like this and that's your first cut this slope ends up being three degrees right the slope here and the reason for that is that you're you take your balance once you get the dimension right at this very tip part right so if I'm if I have to cut a uh, let's say it's 1.6 millimeters uh, between here and here right 1.6 millimeters like that then what I'm doing is I cut this part to 1.6 and that allows me to take the balance and then fit it on like this so for you know for friction fitting and maybe the balance will ride up to this point here and then I'll cut some more and then I'll ride it up to this point here and then I'll cut some more and I'll ride it up to this point here and then if the balance is say this thick where the hole is for the balance I'm gonna draw the balance say this is the balance here and it's this thick right then the leftover here I gotta have enough for friction fitting it so I'll come probably right up to this point right here when I'm cutting the balance so I'll come I'll cut the three degrees down and I'll come right up to this point here and I'll leave this where it is and then when I get into staking set and I have my my stake that that will go over this right so I'll have a, a say a flat stake to start off with that goes over all this like that right and it's hollow it's like this so it's going over it's probably a little longer than that but it's going over the top when I stake this in this direction right I've got enough metal here to grab the for the hole. The hole is slightly uh, smaller than the metal here, so this will I'll stop here, and then I'll be able to stake that on. So that's how you friction fit the part on, right? So you cut this part and make sure this part is 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 um, is the first. It fits perfectly onto this. So if this is 1.6 millimeters. You can use your um, a tool. I use. Let me grab my tools here. Hopefully this is making sense. So I use this tool here, which is my Duzamine, Duzamine gauge, right? And I use this tool, and then I, and I, and when you do this like that, right, the tip of it opens up, and I'll grab that balance staff I'll, like this on the end, right, like this. I'll know the big distance here, and I'll be cutting down to this size. But I'll make sure I've got the three degree slope here and I'll grab that and when I get to maybe 1.7 or something then I start 
I use my actual part and I put it on. I try to get it to sit sit in there. And once I get it to sit in there uh, in the lathe, I'll pull it off, take some more material off, put it back on, pull it off, take some more material off. And it takes a while. Um, you can cut quite a lot uh, quite quickly right up to this point here, actually. But once you get to here, you got to really baby it, baby it at the end here so you don't overcut it. So if it's a friction fit balance, um, then then you don't, you're not going to be curling the end to, to uh, finish it off. If it's not a friction fit balance, you probably want to do exactly the same thing. So uh, most of them are friction fit, but you can put a rivet over the top as well. So if it's not friction fit and you have this configuration like that, and the metal's kind of like this, like that, then you're, I should draw this up here, right? Then you're cutting it kind of to here, and you're leaving a bit of a, a lip here to curl over the balance. So it's hard to draw, draw that anyway. But I didn't want to get into that, so that's non-friction fit balance. So that's the first cut you'd make. You'd fit the balance on, so then the balance would be in place. So you'd have the balance in place like that, like this, messydiagrams.com. And it would be right down to that point there, nicely fit in. Then the next thing is the hairspring. So if you leave a little tiny bit of material there before you cut inward, like this, then then you're able to uh, put a rivet over top of the balance if it's if it's riveted. And I typically leave a little bit anyway, and I try to rivet it over anyway. So even if it is friction fit, just so it stays. So then your next cut is is for the hairspring stud. So you're cutting it down like that. And again, straight cut like this. You've measured the the uh, how how wide this has to be because you have hopefully have the old staff. If you haven't, you have to use a pin gauge to measure the hole and the collet. And then with this one here, your your uh, the collet, the uh, hairspring collet, is like a donut like this, and it's got an opening, right? So it's like this, and there's a bit of an opening there. And then the hairspring is studded. It's sort of studded into here, and then it goes around in circles like that, right? And that's the hairspring. So this is the hole that you've got to fit over here. So it's the same thing. If you make this too big, you'll spread this, the collet, and you'll break it. So it won't work because this is brass, and you will break the brass collet if you do that. If you make the hole, that's if you make it too big. If you make it too small, then your job is to is to close this hole a bit so it fits on and that is as well very difficult it, it, you can do a little bit of that but but usually the space isn't there there isn't that big so you so you use you fit that part on this exact same way you fit the balance on by sizing it properly and then sliding it over and cutting it three degrees so once you've done all that you've got the two parts are are basically fit are ready to fit on right and you don't fit them on of course when it's in the in the lathe so at that point you know you've made your this part of the of the balance right and when you've made this part of the balance and these usually have a bit of an angle when they cut like this and so it ends up the balance ends up looking like this and then like this uh, let me see what I got here no actually I got it I got it wrong the cuts here that's like that like that and then the balance goes this way and then down a bit and then out and then it's got the cone in cone in cone out cone in and then the pivot right in out in pivot that sort of thing if the collet is right here for the hairspring right so so you're making all that well being fit in the lathe with that piece of metal that you found that's maybe two millimeters wide and then and it's uh, you can take the previous balance to do it or you can just make it like 20 percent wider than the hole you need for the uh for the actual balance arm itself so <clears throat> so it's getting pretty messy here so so what I found new piece of paper is that this 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 part here that goes down and then out like that and then like this a little bit and then down and then out kind of screwed that up this thing here that you when you're when you have this in the lathe, you got to cut material over there. So what I was doing is, let me get this out here. I've got these stones here, and these are Arkansas stones. And these stones are kind of 
three of the four edges are square, right? If I look down on it, yeah, three of the four edges are square, and one of the edges is round, so it's a bit round. And that edge, the round edge, when you're taking material off the pivot, the round edge fits in here, right? So it helps you build that uh, curve, right? And the curve is needed again for to to reduce the where the breaking point is so if this pivot breaks can it break here or can it break here or can it break here that sort of thing so like i said before if it was a straight line and it went out and that was your pivot the breaking point would be right here and there wouldn't be any strength in that pivot for that particular balance staff right so so that's one way of doing it and i've done a number of balances with this this material here this one here is completely square but it's a good one for, I can't remember what the name of this stone is, but it's good for move, removing a lot of material fast. So I have gone and cut it down and then cut and removed a lot of material with this stone and then moved to this stone here when I'm getting down and fine tuning it. And, and as I said in one of my videos, when you're, when it's spinning on the lathe, I hold the, uh, I hold it kind of like this and I let it ride. I hold it so loosely, right? Because if you hold it tight at all, you can break the pivot off. So, so that's those are two stones you can use. And the last, the last pivot I made um, on a balance staff, I use this tool here. So I've never, I've used this before, but never to do a, whole, a complete balance staff. But it, it turns out pretty good actually, because I do use this to burnish the staff when I'm finished. So once you're finished cutting the staff, if you looked at a staff close up, right? and you'll draw this like this so if this was the staff close up like that all along here would be you know after you cut it would be fine scratches and indents and all that kind of stuff right so the staff would be kind of like that which would be rough material now this balance staff i made a bit too long just to exaggerate but this fits into the jewel hole right like that and then like this so it fits in like this into the jewel hole like this and if there's then there's a cap jewel on top like this and I'll just put this like this and it's fixed in various different ways so so just forget the end here because this doesn't stick out right so the jewel the staff balance staff ends right here where the cap is and actually the balance staff is touching this cap jewel and then it's riding in the hole and maybe it's 0.01 millimeters tolerance inside between that so it's sticking in it's called side shake so there's not a lot of side shake in this just a little bit to allow it to move and the end shake is the distance between the tip of that pivot and the cap jewel so you, you don't want a lot of end shake either or, or else your whole balance is moving up and down right which is kind of crappy so so when you're cutting this the last thing you need to do is to burnish this thing so it's smooth as hell so so as this little roughy area goes in because there's no way you can keep it smooth using those those other these stones I was telling you about um, when it goes in into the hole here you want this part here to be very very smooth right so it's a little bit closer to the jewel by the way just exaggerating the drawing so so this is the burnishing this is the tool i use to to burnish it and this is a piece of steel i don't know sure what the make of the steel is but this piece of steel has got uh, i try to get a little reflection there it's got a massive amount of fine lines that go this way like that and so when i'm when i've got the staff in the lathe it also has um the square on it is also round is that that makes sense the square is round that doesn't make any sense at all but one of these sides is round right is rounded where the other ones are 90 degrees so it's 90 degrees rounded on this side here so this side here i'll ride on the on this part here right when i'm taking when i'm finishing the balance staff right and i'll be filing this like that on here and this will burnish and take all the metal take all this coarse metal off of the balance and make it as smooth as possible so that's this side here right so and and in this particular tool it's a consistent material right to the end um, and it's 
it starts being round kind of right here uh, you know more than halfway through here this is where it starts being round so if you need to use square square you can here but right here it's rounded so this is the part you use to touch the balance right so now on the other side you see this is a file so it's a pivot file so it's a very fine file and and again it's got I think uh, same position yeah so it's round all the way to the end and then right of the tip here is smooth right at the tip and there's still filing material here so you can actually use this file to bring the the the, uh, the cone part in you can you can cone this with this file using this part of it and then when you finish this and you want to work and make the size of the pivot smaller you focus on the tip of this so you ride you're, you're basically uh, filing with the tip here to take the material off like that that's the sound effects so you're taking the material off of this and you're hitting the smooth part so it doesn't take any material off of this but it does take material off the pivot on the end so that's using the very tip of this too so this is called a it's V A L L O R B E mm -hmm. Val Valorobe or V Valorobe maybe it's Valorobe it depends on how they pronounce it in Switzerland or whatever but Valorobe Valorobe um, something like that so I'm hoping this, this whole video is not inverted by the way <laughs> that would piss me off anyway so that's how you do it you use this part to cut the pivot cut the material off and then when you get to the end this is smooth so it won't take more material off of this but it will the bottom part that's a file will 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 uh, move this down to the right size so i did use this last time and it did a, a very good job in cutting this pivot the mistake i made with this pivot is the bottom in this balance staff here the bottom of this balance staff i made the i cut when i was trimming it i trimmed too much pivot off and so I think some of this cone part is riding on the jewel, which is kind of restricting it from getting a very good amplitude. So, which kind of pisses me off a bit because that, you know, really what I need to do now is take this apart and make the third balance staff for this. Because I've already, I already made one and I had sort of the same problem. And then I made the second one. I thought, okay, I'm good. It works well. I spun it. You saw in the video, I think I spun it with this. Uh, I use this here like that and I was able to push air out of here and spin that thing around at great velocities I thought I had the perfect balance staff for this I did the assembly it was too long I start I got a little bit anxious and cut too much material off the bottom pivot and screwed myself so so it works it does work but I can't regulate it properly because I'm not giving it getting I'm not getting enough uh, amplitude on it first of all um, and that's not good. Um, I did something else here that I'll admit to as well. So I thought I looked at the uh, regulator pins here, the two the uh, snake forks, if I call them snake teeth, that ride along the balance. And I noticed that they were tight on the spring, and I thought they shouldn't be tight on the spring. The spring should be able to ride when it expands and contracts. Should be able to ride between the two pins there. So I went in. I was kind of just doing something else that day and I opened it up and I said well I can I got a really small screwdriver I'll just go in there and then twist the screwdriver a bit and that'll open it up a bit well what I did was I bent the damn thing so I should see if I can show you that but it, it, it now it's going to be hard to see even if I zoom in but I bent it outward so now I've got one tooth that's correct and the other tooth is bent outward so now I have to take all this stuff apart and I've got to get a fine piece of of copper and make another regulator pin out of that so I can do that I know because I've used it on my lathe I've drilled holes that small before so that's something I'd need to do so when I get really bored someday I'll do that right but I know the problem so which which means I should have the be working on the solution so so that's my chat about that um, and this is an American Waltham, so it does work. It does tick. It actually has the amplitude's not great, but it's not like really lame. Um, uh, I did a pretty good job on this planing it and everything else and the whole bit. I just I know I'm going to have to make another balance staff for it. Is 
which like is like, oh my God, here we go again, right? I'll wait till I'm on holidays when I do that. So that's good. Uh, this watch here is a Illinois, uh, it's size 12 uh, pocket watch. Um, it says it's three o'clock, but it's not. It's only two o'clock right now. But if you look at the, um, I can't remember what I did to repair this one. I think I did some staff work on this too, but if you look at the uh, balance on that, it's working really well. It's swinging extremely high. But the problem, I, there's always a problem, right? There's just, I'm having a problem. So just to let you know. The problem I have is I'm at the maximum end of my, of my swing here to slow this thing down. Because this thing is working so well, it's, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's so well or not, but it's fast as hell, right? This, this movement is very pretty. It's been regulated to, to uh, three positions. I'm gonna zoom in on it for you so you can see what it looks like. Um, it's a beautiful movement. Uh, it's an Illinois movement. Uh, let me get my focus up. So let me have a look at that. Okay, there it is there. That's in, I'll just back it off, back, back it up a bit. There, right there. So it's an Illinois movement. It's uh, uh, three positions, adjusted to three positions that you can see on one side. And it's a marquee, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S, marquee autocrat. Someone, uh, someone online told me there's such thing as an aristocrat as well. But this is an autocrat, and those are gold settings for this. Um, Illinois Watch Company. Uh, it's it's a nice movement. I think it's worth something as well. I think it's a 14 karat case, gold case. Um, and the movement, as you can see, I made that thing before it wasn't working well, and I made a video on that. And the video I made was magnetism. It's one of my previous videos. And I cleaned that. I dipped the whole darn thing into uh, into lighter fluid, and I cleaned the. Uh, the balance spring on it because it was sticking together and it was actually magnetized as well it snapped together to magnetize it so I demagnetized it cleaned it then then I demagnetized it and then I got it working perfectly so the and the regulator pins are riding on the, the hairspring perfectly but as you can see I'm out of play if I try to increase the the uh, speed of this thing like pushing it this way um, this bar is as far over as it gets so and you just adjust it with the screw on this side here. See which, where do I move my, right there, that's where the screw is. So, and it's adjustable. And you can adjust it while it's in the watch too. It's a little trickier, but but I'm at the end. I could actually make this thing jump the bar and then push it over a bit and, and then I get more, because uh, I do have enough, I do have enough disc room on this side here, right, to, put, to, to move that regulator over a bit, but I don't want to. So the other option here, uh, for making this work is to is to actually uh, go is to lighten the weight of the balance itself right so and I've done that before it's a little bit of work but it's doable and I could do that and and using the screws that are in the balance um, and either if there's weights on them now uh, timing screws on them now I could take off the timing screws and if there's no if there aren't any timing screws on this, then um, then I just have to put on a lighter, put a lighter screw on. Um, and with any luck, maybe the timing screws are out further. So let me show you what that is for a second. So when you have your, you see, piece of paper seven, piece of paper eight. So when you have your balance, I'll just make the balance like this here, right? To exaggerate once again. So that's the balance there. Um, and it's got, it's got screws, you know, balance screws, it's got timing screws and it's got for temperature and it's got, uh, screws for temperature and screws for, for, for other things. So and if the balance is here and it's attached like that, make it like this, there's the arm for the balance that goes down here. And then this one goes close, right? So the material goes this way and this one actually goes pretty close and then the material goes this way and actually this this there's a screw there's going to be a screw right here probably right there and this is a screw that you end up changing so if the screw comes up like this and that's the head of the screw say like this i'm making everything big and there's a slot there 
and the screw comes this should be straight by the way but the screw comes through like that then you can to speed the watch up there's another one on the exact opposite side you can you can pull this thing you can basically screw this down i think i got the right two screws i'm going to check for a second because i don't want to tell you something that's wrong i'm going to see if my junk pile here if i got another balance there um let me see do i have i need a balance that's let me see so not in there let me grab a another pile of parts here and see if i can find a balance and this one if i get my parts I got another thing with a billion parts here, so. Alright, what do we got here? There's a few parts for you. So, let me look and see if I can find a balance that's the right one. Uh, I'm trying to find one that's broken on the end. These are all, these, these balances all seem to be solid, not, not without an opening. Let me just look for a second because I've got some balances here, but they're solid. These ones here are solid. I need one with an opening, damn it. Anyway, let me give up in a second here. I've got the balance here, but it's solid. Oh no, there's an opening there. Yeah, there's an opening on this one here. So, let me just grab this one for a second. And I won't spend much time putting that away right now because we're on film. But, this one here is an opening right here. The opening's on this side right here, right there. So there was, I believe, a screw right there and another one on the opposite side. Anyway, these are the screws that you use to change the timing. So as you unscrew these. So it's the screws that are attached to the main arm here, not the screws that are on their own, I believe not the screws that are on their own. I'd have to get another balance of some sort out and have a good look at it because I uh, I don't want to give you bad information again, right? So I got a Hamilton Hamilton Lancaster pocket watch where I have to make a new balance for it. Here it is here. So let me just look at this one here for a second and see what I got. Yeah, I'm right. So in this one here um, and there's the balance there and if you look at and if I grab that balance you'll see that it's wiggly which means it's the pivots are broken I had to make a new balance for it there's the crack right there and right over the top of that main bar that attaches to the rest of the balance there's a screw here that is the timing screw sometimes there's two of them sometimes there's four there's never one because they have to be equal size so so what you're doing is you're to speed it up, you're screwing that one in closer, if you're able to, um, if it's not flush in there. And to slow it down, you're screwing it out. Um, you can also add uh, weights to it, timing washers to it, which I, I do have a bunch of timing washers. And the, again, equal amount of timing washers on both ends. So this diagram is accurate. So, so that's what you're doing. So in this case, here you'd be screwing it inward to speed it up a bit, right? And so if that watch, this watch here, um, has timing screws, right? I'll have to have a look at it and check. Then I do have the ability to screw those in the way, and it make a very, just basically makes the weight go inward, which makes the, the object, uh, the, uh, the balance move quicker. It's like the figure skater who pulls, who pulls his or her arms in, right? And then spins. And then when they pull their arms out, they stop spinning. It's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And there's probably a name for that that someone can tell me. It's not centrifugal force or centrifugal force. Something like that. Really, when I'm making these videos, I should look this stuff up before I tell you stuff that's not true, right? So, But in general, this one is... The amplitude on this one is crazy good. Let me see if I can test this for you. This, somebody on, online said that I... My little amplitude testing trick is pretty cool. So what you do is you take your, your phone, your iPhone, like this, and you flip it over to slow motion, like that, right? And then you point at your at the balance, and then in the on the iPhone, right, you can back this off a bit. And let me see. Okay, good. Back this up just a bit. 
on the iPhone you can basically zoom in on this right zoom in on the bounce like that and so it's trying to zoom so I'm going to just when I see it's focused I'm going to press the button watch 1002 1003 and you just have to do it for three seconds so you don't end up with huge amounts of video data and then when I hit playback on this as you can see I'm going to try to there we go when I hit playback on this I can look at the swing on that so I look at one arm going all the way around and it's ending around here play that again here okay it's ending here and then 360 degrees would be all the way back and it's going 360 degrees plus another 100 degrees because it's ending over there if you look at that so that's 360 degrees plus another 100 degrees is 460 degrees watch this 360 plus 100 equals four zero zero there's a math for the kids that don't know how to do math today right so so that's that's a pretty damn good swing right so so that's a very good swing on this thing but the amplitude is actually 200 so you don't measure the amplitude as a full swing it's half of the full swing so that's how I typically measure the amplitude. I can put it in my timer, in my watch timing software and stuff, and it'll give me the amplitude. But I kind of like to look at it to see if there's any issues in slow motion. So this gives me the uh, another good use for an iPhone. If you try to email yourself the file for this, by the way, it won't work. You won't be able to send the uh, send the file and it won't stay in slow motion. It'll, it'll be a normal file. So the phone itself, I think, um, has the software that slows it down but if you've got other software you can slow it down so that's what I do that's what I do there for so this Illinois pocket watch um, I can get this thing running probably right speed and I, uh, yeah it's a 14 karat gold filled keystone um, keystone case so this is a, a beautiful old case right so so that's this one here and then this one here of course every one of my watches has issues right this one here is not running too bad. It says 2 o'clock and it's 2.38. It's actually running really bad. So I actually have to speed this one up as well. So I don't know what's, what it is with me and pocket watches, but, but this one here I got running, and I got running really well. As you can see, it's running pretty darn good. Not as well as the other one, but still running well. I think I cleaned this before, but I can't remember. I should look at my database to see if I've cleaned it, but it's a very beautiful, well-decorated 17 jewel Waltham Royal pocket watch. Um, but same as the other one, I could probably just speed it up by uh, playing with the uh, uh, the timing the timing screws, and I probably I might be able to get more speed out of it with the timing screws. Um, don't know, so I'll have to fart around with that because the same situation here. The spring is in good condition. The, the timing, the uh, doesn't seem like there's any issue with the uh, the uh, levers there, or the timing pins. So for the uh, lever, so it should be fine. Timing pins for the adjustments. Anyway, so that's that's this pocket watch here, which is a nice size 12, probably a banker a banker's kind of watch. Put it in their upper pocket, and in this watch, in the case here, they would put their initials there in this open area, and there's no initials there. And I hate to say this, but I got this online for 25 bucks. So this was a good deal. I looked it up, and it's around 300 retail and around uh, 200. You know, we get low, medium, and high value of it, and I think the high value was 250 or 200, 250, and then three something retail. Because and it's in mint condition. It's a beautiful watch. So, so I got to time this baby too. Got it going nicely, but got to time it. So. Anyway, that's, uh, I think that's, oh, what else did I want to say? Okay, so I bought some polishing cream for, for pocket watches. Um, so this is, this is, um, it's for automobiles, rubbing compound. And it was on one of the blogs that I saw somebody said, you can buy this rubbing compound. It's really good for, for, uh, for doing work on uh, pocket watch uh, crystals. So... 
I think I think I'm going to try using this. Uh, I think it'll work well on the plastic crystals. So the one I have, this one here that I have, that's it's really nice, but it, there's too many scratches in here. And this one here, I'm going to see if I can put a little compound on that and go in circles until this thing shines up nicely. So it's just got a fine grit. It's abrasive, and I think it's like three three thousand grit uh, abrasive and and it's you know it recommending you don't drink it <laughs> you can you can i think you can breathe it in but it's also probably not recommended either so just make sure you wear a mask or something wear your covid19 mask while you're doing your watch repair work and then you can work on the crystal and keep going in circles this is meant for for uh headlights on cars so so it's uh it's a good material for that i bought it on amazon it's not it's not cheap it cost me it's about us probably about 20 bucks us if you can go pick it up in the store it's going to cost you less but i had shipping and everything else and canadian the canadian dollar kind of sucks right now so it cost me like 38 bucks canadian for this got delivered to my door in a week which which is cool so i was willing to do that anyway this is the compound i got so i'm going to try this out later and see if that is an even better compound for cleaning up this if it is this is going to last forever Unless I decide to do my headlights on the on the cars, but they're relatively new cars, so so anyway, that's my video for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I've been blabbing around. Um, I don't have any other further uh, great watchmaking advice for you today, good or bad. I do have to tackle this baby, um, and this is like I said, a Lancaster. Uh, it's a Hamilton Lancaster watch. I think it's Lancaster. Anyway, 17 17 Jewel. Uh, yeah, it's a Hamilton watch company, Lancaster 17 Jewel. Uh, other than other than making a new balance staff, which means I got to take all this stuff apart and do the staff. Um, once I do the staff, this thing should work. I bought it as a uh, as a parts watch to fix this the Hamilton that I had riding in this thing here actually. So I bought it for a parts watch with this thing here, but the pivot on the fourth wheel was too fat. For this one even though the parts stuff everybody says it's exact same pivot um it wasn't so there you go that's why i had to make uh make the pivot for this one here right and last but not least this is my seiko what's it called it's my seiko diver it's got a uh i can't even remember the name of this the, but it's a seiko mini tuna and i love it it's got a really nice movement in it it's a what does it say here blah 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 it says, uh, yeah, it's got an, a, a 4R36 movement in it. So it's a 4R36 movement. It's hacking and winding. It's got big, big hands. It's got a really cool shroud here. Got to make sure that the, got to make sure these are tight, so you don't lose the screws for the shroud because that will upset you. Um, it's, uh, it, it's got a double, double click on it, and it clicks only one way so if you're diving and i used to scuba dive a lot uh, you only want it to click one way so you can sort of look at your watch every now and then and know you have only 15 minutes left before you're going to be down to your 15 percent air reserve so and i bought the strap from strap code um, great company uh, it's a bit i could probably polish the strap again but because uh, i wear this watch a lot this is i wear a lot of different watches as you've seen in my videos but this one here i like it's very got some girth to it too and you can see it and the loom is amazing the loom is incredible so I'm not sure if I can show you the loom but probably not anyway the loom's amazing on this thing um, so this is my Seiko one of my Seiko divers it's a prospect Seiko prospect something or other right I can't remember the number but it's called the baby tuna because I guess the I guess there's a mama tuna or a daddy tuna and this is the baby tuna and I got the baby tuna and and the reason they call it the baby tuna is that this shroud here is supposed to be like a tuna can like a can of tuna and that's why they call them a tuna the baby tuna anyway thanks for the uh thanks for watching uh my movie today uh, i'm not sure what i'll call it but uh give me some comments back i, I do like comments because it means people are enjoying my blabbing um and i hope uh, if you did learn something thanks if i said something wrong then correct me and I will make sure I say it right next time because I am always learning. So watch repair is a 
an art or a craft or whatever that takes you a lifetime to learn and after you finish learning it you still haven't learned it so so the uh anyway so that's pretty good so that's it for today and look at that that's my freestyle the only one of the few digital watches i have which is nice that's a freestyle from new york beautiful the strap is from uh turin italy i was in Tur torino turin italy on business and i went into this watch uh place to they had to buzz me in because i looked like i had a hat on a t-shirt and they weren't going to let me in but i wanted to get a nice italian strap with uh with a red th uh, thread here on the sides and stuff and so it's a beautiful strap um maybe i'll put it on this watch here and see what it looks like so anyway that's a freestyle which is kind of neat it's a diver watch it goes down 200 but it's not automatic i'm i really i'm sorry it's not automatic it's a freestyle one I also have the Freestyle 2, I hate to say, and it's a nice watch too. Anyway, so take care. See you later. I'll put the video on right now. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Bye-bye.